Hey everybody, welcome to Brick Vault. Today is another LEGO Top 10 Mocks of the Week. I call it of the week, it kind of comes out a little bit sporadically, but basically these are the 10 coolest creations I happen to see people building in LEGO bricks throughout this last week-ish. And uh, so there's a little bit of a Halloween theme, if you could probably guess. A lot of custom builders have been making some really cool Halloween themed models. And then of course, I just choose my 10 favorite in general. In the description below, there are links to everybody I'm talking about and a whole lot more. So if you want to learn more about these designers, all that information and more is open to you. Before we jump in, first I do want to say that the custom building instructions that have popped up in the web store this week come from the designer Built Bricks. There are five new lightsaber designs if you want to check them out. A bunch more are also on the way from that same builder. And if you enjoy our content, feel free to subscribe, comment, share, and don't forget to smash the like button. <laughs> All right, let's jump into top 10. The first one up here is from the designer Redverse. The title is Chainsaw Man. He's got a chainsaw for a head, two chainsaws attached to his arms and a great looking pose. You can see that it is sort of a button up shirt, probably rolled up sleeves, tie swinging to the side in that forward lunge motion. I like the gnarled builds that we have for the fingers. That's actually some Technic pieces that I think are just used really appropriately here. And the pumped up kicks <laughs> definitely add a bit of flair to this design that are that feels a little bit unexpected considering the fact that he's got a chainsaw for a head. By the way, the chainsaw's got these great gnarly sharp teeth, which is a totally different vibe. This would be an excellent Halloween costume, but I don't think you could actually use the chainsaw at like a real one to use as a build around your head. Those things are crazy heavy. You'd need some for fake frame, I don't know. Anyways, we're moving on to the next one. Not a Halloween themed design per se, but Autumn Light, the title of this model, is definitely within this realm for sure. I don't believe it's an elk. I think it's more of like a, like a full grown deer. He's got a huge set of antlers and just one of those really amazing poised, proud stances that uh, that's just very hard to capture within bricks. There's a lot of energy to this figure, very much like the last one. And to quote the famous philosopher Socrates, this deer is majestic AF. All right, we're moving to the crown. It's got these great autumn leaves, but there's also some lanterns there, probably giving a little bit more context to the title Autumn Light. This deer in the universe, by the way, of the build must be massive because you can see the hill it's standing on actually has a church right there in the bottom corner to give you a estimate for scale. Great looking model. We are now moving down to a build from the designer Norton 74. This is Haunted A-Frame Cabin, and it's also a tribute to Monster Fighters, which is a theme from like 10 years ago. So the build itself is very similar to a previous design from the same builder, which was also an A-Frame Cabin, but you can see the color combination has gone a bit more gaunt with the black roof and the light bluish gray wood, I suppose. It's like totally dead wood that makes up the entire building. The model is chock full with all kinds of sort of classic spooky details. You've got a witch hat, you got ghosts, you have spiders and spider webs. Dracula is sitting there. You've got a werewolf, a zombie driver. There's also a mummy, Frankenstein, cemetery. There's, it's everything. Everything that you kind of think of when it's classic Halloween but done in a very finessed and very detailed build style that just gives the whole scene a ton of character. This is one of those builds that you could definitely look at for a long time and just see a few more little details here and there, the longer and longer you look. But now we're moving on to the next build. This is number seven in the lineup if you are keeping count, though they are not at all presented in any order of best to worst. From Thomas of Tortuga, this is called Ironclad Voskasheni Ray. The design of this ship in the description of the model says it is based on a yacht from the 1880s. And specifically, I think it's referring to that extremely 
wide hull that we have that sticks out kind of like a fat belly. The fortress of cannons that rests atop, however, and of course the color combination is entirely a creative endeavor. I particularly like all of the guns that are sticking out of the sideways built window pieces, and the inclusion of these nice vibrant colors on the ship really give it that other world kind of look. There's sand blue, I think some medium azure, along with tan and nougat. Thomas of Tortuga did a really good job fleshing out this ship design, and now we're moving on to a model or a scene that is titled Tortuga, and this is from the builder Fay Bricks. It is one of those classic Lego pirate scenes that you just love to see. It's an island, there's some pirate ships, and there's some pirates that are seemingly up to no good. There's some really unique qualities here though. The model itself, all of those structures are built in very creative ways, sort of nestled right there in with the rock design. Some of the buildings are pieces of old ships that have probably wrecked at some point, while other structures seem to be built from scratch and have their own totally different look. The water detailing is awesome, and to me it kind of looks like an island that became a small little township because ships got wrecked there and they had nowhere else to go. All right, next build is from the designer Aero O'Conan. The title is AI Admiral. It's kind of interesting. This model is based on a design that was inputted into an AI program. An image came back and then the builder decided to use that inspiration to create the figure you are seeing here. Wonderful color combo that Dark blue really, really looks great against the bright red and gold. Excellent build for a crown. I like how the golden armor also uh, matches up with some of the chain pieces for the necklace area. And there's definitely a lot of style and attitude added to this character when you see the robe just going down one side of one leg. If you enjoy Lego figure building, you will definitely like Aero O'Conan. And we are jumping on to the next model. RE Lego titled this Legend of the Haunted Halogic Part 4. So this is a series of builds and this particular vignette is just one of them. And presumably they are telling a haunted tale as they sit in a small tavern sipping on pints. I think they're using those pieces from the Harry Potter line, the butterbeer, but I just really gravitated to this nice intimate little setting. Great build that holds all the wine bottles in the back. I like the barrels that are on their sides. You can see all the glasses stacked up, wood flooring, some simple embroidery along the bar itself, and it's all built on an excellent looking little stand. Now this next model, I got super excited when I saw it, especially when I saw that the designer, the G Bricks, put it together, they are an excellent car builder. This is the Envision 74 from Hyundai, built at the Speed Champion scale, which is slightly upscaled uh, for minifigs, but it's kind of that perfect size for really getting uh, some nice subtle details across when you're trying to create a specific look for a specific car. To my knowledge, only one of these cars exists in real life. It is a concept car that runs on hydrogen power developed by Hyundai, and its initial design is actually based on the concept car that the DeLorean from the 1980s originally came from. Long story short, it's got that retro, super cool look. It looks like something that came straight from Cyberpunk 2077, only cooler, and apparently it's like crazy powerful as well. The G-Bricks made some very nice, very well-defined little finessed shapes when you look closer and closer at this Lego build, and then the original, you'll know what I'm talking about. Number two here in the lineup is from the builder Dornby. The title is End of the War, and it's actually a brickery collab, meaning that this is not just one person's design, but several builders all came together to end up finishing this massive diorama. It is not directly about one specific uh, like factual event within World War II, but instead this diorama represents a collection of images of what a Western part of Western Europe would look like or could look like at the end of the war. There is a really well detailed church in the corner, but there's a bomb hole right in the rooftop, a crashed plane right across the road, I see a tank stuck in the river, a halfway harvested pumpkin field. Oh, I just noticed this, fresh graves in the grave site, which is very grim. But when you get to town, there's all kinds of damage and destruction that can be seen, and even some abandoned trenches in the opposite corner of this very, very large model. Really excellent details, would have loved to have seen this one in person. And we're jumping now to the last one of top 10. The title is Magnate, and the builder is Eugene 
Joaquin Levine. I'm sure I don't have to tell you what models or single model maybe was probably used as the seed set to create this interesting looking spaceship. Lots of dark red, lots of gold pieces, and really just an interesting set of shapes. I like all the long curves that come down and around across the center. There are some bulbous engine looking builds that come around to the side, and something that feels wholly unique and sci-fi while at the same time having a bit of style and pizzazz, especially this color combo being so vibrant for a spaceship design. All right, that's it from our personal favorite top 10. Here are some honorable mentions. Before we go, the builder Frost built a pumpkin patch. Looks very, very crowded. Eric the Skeleton has the build Rock Hall as a micro diorama. Start wearing purple, wearing purple. This is titled Miss Purple, and the builder is Milan Sekiz. Definitely a vibe for this build. Mitsuru Nikaido titled this Object 12, but we all know that this is just a good boy. Also, if this build reminds you of a particular joke Jim Brewer told 20 years ago, let me know. Almost totally unrelated, this next model is, uh, it's titled Hand or Glove. The builder is Nathan Hake, and it is both creepy and funny. Designer Kai E created Ambassador Class Prototype. It is not, I don't think at least, an official Star Trek ship, just something that looks and feels super Star Trek-y and has some great details. Let's end this on a very peaceful, simple build. The title is Peace. The designer is Roland Smith. It's just a nice, excellent little model. I think it would look really great as like a desktop or something. And that is it for my personal favorite top 10 of the week. Remember, links to everything I'm talking about and a whole lot more are in the description below. If you enjoy our content, feel free to like, subscribe, comment, share, and uh, that's gonna be it. Thanks again for watching, and we'll see you next time at Brick Vault. <laughs>